Alright, so in this tutorial we're going to be creating a core script. Now, a core script is basically uh, a helper script for specific scripters. Now, you may have heard of uh, Yamfly Core, which is used by a crap ton of people. Um, all this script really is, is just a way for Yamfly's other scripts to have easier access to things or just code that's there and can be reused repeatedly. All right. So basically that's what a core uh, script is. It puts code in there that you will reuse for other things. Okay. So let's just jump into it. So I wrote up a couple of things that I think we can create for our own core engine. Or script, I mean. So uh, screen field sprite. Now obviously every time we make a sprite um, the sprite itself is uh, comes in however big the actual image is. So, throughout this tutorial series, every single time I've been creating a sprite, it's always been as big as the screen itself. So, I think that would be appropriate to have as its own uh, part of the core, because that way, every time I need this, every time I need a sprite to um, load up as big as the screen, I don't have to type in all the code. I can just go to the core screen and say, "Hey, load me this. I want this to fit the screen," and it'll do it for me. Then we have the time tracker. The time tracker is, well, when I get up to that, that's going to be how you can track, uh, how you can track everything in seconds rather than frames. Okay. Uh, scene menu, quick option creation. Uh, that's pretty easy, and straightforward. Basically, every single time we've had to make, have to make an option for the scene menu, we've always had to. Uh, if I just go over here, down to scene. Yeah, we've had to do all this, and this gets really tedious sometimes. So if we were to create an option for this in the call, all we'd have to do is say, create this option for me, can you do it? And it will do it for you. All right. Uh, next one, CSV file reader. Um, I just did this recently. It's been stuck in my head, so yeah. That's why I feel like we should make one, because why the hell not? And then get, a f uh, get event first comment and get event all comments. All right, pretty easy and straightforward. So this is just a list I made up in the past couple of minutes because I wasn't really thinking about it before then. So there may be other stuff that comes into my head as we're making this, but uh, for now, these are all I have. So let's just make these. All right, so let's start off here. First of all, we have to do a module. Your own name, obviously. Uh, damn it. Let me... And then I again module core. So what's that do for me? That gives me the diamond core engine. Yeah. Alright. Um back to that thing again. Yes. Screen filled sprite. So what we're gonna do in this one is we're gonna go a bit yet. I like that name earlier. Haha. <laughs> Alright. Class screen build sprite okay and this is going to take in sorry I forgot I was doing Ruby ah all right definitionalize initialize and this is going to take in the argument of the file name okay the file name and the path so file name then we're gonna do visible so visible and that's going to equal to true by default and then Z is equal to 200, I believe. Um, I'm not exactly sure what sprites Z normally starts out as, so I'm just going to assume it's 200 for now. <clears throat> Alright, so here's what I'm going to do. We're going to create a screen filled sprite here, so we've already got code for this. Let's just copy that over. And I don't remember where the hell I put it. Nope. There it is. So screen filled sprite and that's going to be a member of sprite. That's going to be inheriting from sprite. Alright. Yeah. Alright. <clears throat> Moving on. So it's going to inherit from sprite, which means it has access to the X, Y, and the Z and all that stuff. 
All right, and to modify them, you go self.x, self.y, and self.z. So self.z is going to equal to z right here. Okay? All right, and self.x, self.y is going to be 0, 0 because we want it to be in the left, uh, top left hand corner of the screen because it's a screen filled sprite, so we want it to start in the top left hand corner of the screen and then just fill the screen. Yep. All right. So, all right, now here we'll go self.bitmap. Again, here, self. All right, that's graphics and all that, that's fine. And this one here is self.zoom, because remember, we're inheriting uh, from the sprite now, so everything, all the access to the sprite stuff itself is still self. All right, xy, that start, should be starting for zero. If not, it's going to make it, make it so it is here. All right. Self dot y is equal to zero. Okay. All right. And now the bitmap. Self dot bitmap is equal to bitmap dot new. And this takes in the following. All right. So in case I didn't show up before, you can actually load in bitmap from anywhere in your computer by using bitmap dot new rather than cache dot picture. All right. So that's, uh, if you wanted to be able to load it from anywhere, just go bitmap.new and then file name and they'll do the rest for you. Alright, and we don't need these anymore. Okay, and that will create us a screen filled sprite. Alright, so now what I want to do is I'm going to also go def dispose. So now, from now on, whenever I need to dispose this sprite, I don't have to go sprite.bitmap.dispose and then sprite.dispose. I want this to do it for me. Okay, so that's uh, that dispose. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go self dot bitmap dot dispose dispose, and then we're gonna go super, which reminds me I should do it here. Yeah, and the reason why we go super here is because remember we are inheriting from the sprite class itself. And in our sound test scene, when we need to dispose of the sprite, which was, here it is, uh, when we need to dispose of the sprite, we just go sprite.dispose, right? So obviously that means in the sprite class itself, there is a method called dispose. And since we're inheriting from that, we just want to go superclass.dispose, all right? Cool. So, we've done that part, and now, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to check out the uh, default Z self dot z just so I can actually set the default value to be that alright <clears throat> cool so now in my I'm just gonna get scene title scene title here we go I'm just gonna put it in the start for now and terminate one up alright put it there and it's gonna go I'll keep that because this is only temporary. Diamond Plant 3, Diamond Core. Don't even know if I need the Diamond Plant 3 part of it. Whatever. 3, Diamond Core. Dot new. Dot screen fill sprite. Dot new. Nope. Dot new. And this takes in the file name, so I have to close this for now. Go into my. Pictures, which is here, and I do have pictures. Okay, uh, give me this. Oh, one more thing I forgot to do: the path to the image, which is graphics and pictures, and then that. So file name is that pictures, then the name itself, which is this. Come on. Alright. And that will load it up for me. And I don't have to put in the other two arguments because they're default, remember? Alright, so that will create it. It's going to go at sprite. So you go that. And then in terminate, I'm just going to dispose of it. Sprite.dispose. And hopefully there are no errors. Alright, do it. 
Zero. Cool. Alright. That doesn't seem right. I'm try it again. I'm gonna, uh, self, let's see. Might be too high on my list. I'm gonna put it here. Alright. Still zero, really? I guess, uh, it's zero by default. Hmm. 100. Yeah, but you're blocking everything. Anyway, now that we know whether it works, well, it works. Okay? So this needs to be modified somewhat. I'm going to go on a sprite. I want to see what the default Z is. Sprite. Okay, Z. Sprite equals the equalness, large enough value, closest sprite closest to the player the sprite will be displayed. If two sprites have the same equalness, one will get larger than the other, and blah 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 blah. Uh Yeah, I don't know. I think what I'll do is I'll go into create background, which is here. Copy. Yes. I can do that. Then I'm gonna go into here and it's gonna be like Z. Show me what the default Z is. Zero. I'm a little confused. But that's okay. Mm, Alright, fine. Alright, so that part's done anyway. Don't need this anymore. So we've done the first part of it. We now have uh, now we'll have the screen fill sprite done, so I'm just gonna put an asterisk tail. Done. Next one's time tracker. And that's glass. I should be using comments. Back here. So that's glass and Oh no, I better get. I have two different styles of doing this. Yep. And this is screen filled sprite. Alright, done, sweet. Alright, so next one was time tracker, so let's do this. Give me you. Class time tracker. Time tracker. Alright, this one might take a little getting used to. Alright, class time tracker. And def initialize. Takes in no arguments, doesn't need any. Okay, and then, well, we need instance variables, so let's go ATTO underscore accessor, and we want to call this, we're going to call this current frame. Yep, ATTO accessor start frame. Alright, don't worry if you don't understand what I'm doing here. I'll, sh I'll explain it in a second. Alright, start frame, current frame. And yeah, that should be it. Okay. Now, on initialize, I want to take in no value. Doesn't have to. Start frame is important though. So, at start frame is equal to uh, graphics fix dot current frame. Alright. Alright. 
for just for now I'm gonna go I'm gonna go I'm gonna grab C title again. Scene title again. Come here. I need you. Put it there. This is just gonna be my debug thing. Alright. I'm gonna go I'm gonna get rid of that. I like diamond core on its own. Yeah. Cool. Diamond core. And then time tracker. Dot new. Takes no arguments. And then I wanna go message box underscore P because I'm gonna be I wanna be sure that at uh graphics dot frame time is actually something. I think I remember it being something. Graphics module. Damn. Alright. Then, I guess what we'll do is go right here and then we'll say message box underscore p graphics dot methods and see what is available to us because I know one of them does what I want. Reset, update, wait, fade in, fade out, freeze in, transition, blah, 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 blah. Uh, frame rate, frame count, that's the one. Alright, frame underscore count. And now when we run it, damn, nope, oh. Alright, that was fine. It started off at uh, zero because we just started the game. But if we were to run it again afterwards, um, if we were to run it again afterwards, that means we would uh, get a different frame. So let's do this. I'm going to go into the update method here. Diff. Update. I'm just going to go super. Because I'm overwriting stuff I shouldn't be, and this is for debug purposes. So then I'm going to go. Uh, which box must go P. Which box must go P. Show me the frame count, which would be different. And no, that should not be missed to us, because then I'll never get out of it. P. And then over here on the side. What's that? There you go. You can see the frame count getting higher and higher. So basically, every single update we have we've had so far has been added to here. Okay. So so far, we've updated 900 times. All right. All right. Now get rid of that. So what does that all mean? Well, 60 frames is supposed to be a second in uh, with games normally. So there are some games that go to 120 frames per second, but the standard is 60 per second. And there's also other games that go up to 30, but whatever. Alright, so what we'll do is we're going to go start frame, which is this. Alright, this is start frame right here, which equals to the current uh, frame count that we have in graphics. Okay, and then we're going to go def update def update and this is actually going to uh, update the start frame uh, sorry update the current frame which I should uh, be using as well so at current frame is equal to at start frame okay and then we're going to go and then we are going to go um, at current frame is equal to graphics at frame count Okay. Now, what's going to happen is every single frame, this is going to be increased by one. And basically, what we want to do is we're going to have here def time up. And here's what we're going to do we're going to return. There's another thing I should have done ATTR uh, reader. I should have made these all readers actually. Reader. Because we're not going to write to them, are we? Reader, and this one is seconds. Okay? And right here in your initialize, take in seconds. Seconds. Uh, yeah. Or just time. And this should be a float. So. Seconds is equal to 
time dot two f just in case it wasn't already uh, afloat. Okay, and now time up. What we're going to do is we're going to go um, at current underscore frame minus at start underscore frame. Okay. Divided by graphics dot frame rate again in brackets is greater than seconds. Okay. Return. Return this. Alright, gotta get my calculator now. Calculator. So here's what's going to happen. When we, the first thing we're going to do is going to have start frame, which is, let's say it's going to be 10, even though it's going to be 0 for this one. Alright. Then the current frame is going to increase. It's going to keep on increasing until it's time up. So we'll say this increases to, uh, current frame increases to 400. So 400, nope, 400 minus start frame, which is 10, divided by... Um, graphics at frame rate, which will always be 60, so divide that by 60 is equal to 6.5, which would be greater than 5 seconds if I had it here. You see where I'm going with this now? So it's maths that you need to look out for. So let's go to 300 now. We'll go 300 minus 10. So current frame, current frame, yep, divided uh, minus 10 for start frame. Because remember, when you uh, create a time tracker, you are setting the start frame to the current frame count at that point. So I could be playing this game for hours and then set the frame at that time. And then what, what would I have then? I would have probably up to a million. Okay. Alright, and then uh, that's minus start frame. Uh, divided by graphics at frame rate, which is 60. And then we get 4.8, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, and yeah, which is not greater than 5 seconds, which means, you know, this would be false. Okay? Alright. So, let's see, no, not that one. I want to start copying these. Initialize. is initialize new method because I'm not rewriting over anything am I and this is a new class okay new class again just organizing everything suppose okay and do it here Public instance variables, public instance variables. Just because it looks nice, nicer that way. Initialize object initialization, which is what they call it. Object initialization update. New method update and time up is time up. Okay, now there is one more thing we can do here rather than just uh, relying on the whatever's called in the time tracker itself to start updating it, uh, updating it, we can actually go, we can actually use uh, a feature that we have, and that would be. Uh, two at symbols in front of a variable name. Now, I know what it does, I just don't remember how I'm supposed to initialize it. Cool, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Alright, so right here I'm just going to go... See, so those are public, and this one is private. Private. 
private instance variables. And this one is two at signs. I'll explain what this is in a second. And this one is time track. Time tracker list. Okay. And in here we're going to have add self to list equal true. Time tracker dot list dot push uh, self if add self to list. Okay, now I'll explain what this is. Um, when you have two at signs, it means it's not individual to one class itself. All right, so we have an at sign here in front of this variable. That means whenever I create a new time tracker it will actually create a new one of these as well along with it so if I have two time trackers that means there's one of these for both of these uh, for both time tracker instances whereas if I have two at symbols in front of a variable name there is only one variable shared across all of those classes I mean instances okay so if I was to have two time trackers here that means this one would still exist for both of them. Okay, so uh, let's just try this now. One to two seconds, so this one can be five seconds, and this one can be six point four seconds, whatever. All right, and the default thing here is true, so we don't have to worry about that. Then I'm just going to go uh, t here is equal to that one, and i is equal to that one, just because I can. Then I'm going to do t dot uh, time tracker list. Yeah, I'm gonna go t dot. Um, give me this. Oh, can I actually get that? Don't think I can. No, I'm gonna go def get. Just temporarily, so I can get that. Return this. All right. So I'm gonna go t dot get message box underscore p just so I can print it out t dot get then I'm going to go t dot get again now here's what's going to happen this time tracker class is going to be made this first one here is going to be made and it's going to put itself into the list to the time tracker list okay then I will be made which will also put itself into the time tracker list. Okay? Now, what we'll, why we're printing out t.get is because that's proof to show you that even though this class here, this uh, instance of the class here, has not been accessed since this one was created, the public instance, uh, the private variable I just made above can still be uh, changed. Okay? So, remember, the at, at, um, instance variables means that this variable is shared across all instances of a class whereas just one at symbol means this is uh, this variable here exists in all class but this one specifically only belongs to this one okay go all right so that's the first one time tracker start frame zero you know all this stuff blah 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 blah, blah. go again what's happened the second we have one here and then we have a second one here. Alright. So, um, how to use this. What we can do is, uh, we don't really need these anymore. Alright, and I'm going to keep that actually. Get. Get time checker list. Time checker list. And now what we're going to do is we're going to modify another class entirely. All right. So we have a class screen fills right here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break these up. End. And then I'm going to do this again because, as we should know at this point, you can overwrite, you can um, re-add stuff into a module after you've already defined it. So I can create a new class down here. All right. Okay. Bunch of that. that's, that's all fine. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do all this stuff here. Would you do the time tracker stuff? And I'm going to redefine, or well not redefine, I'm going to alias some graphics methods. Alright, so as we should know, graphics itself is a class that is hidden from us. Well, actually it's not a class, it's a module. It's a module that has been hidden from us. We, can't, we cannot actually see the code itself, but we can still alias it. Okay? So I can go graphics.update just fine, but I can't actually um, see the code myself. Alright, so I'm going to go module, graphics, yep, and, and then what we're going to do is going to go uh, alias, sorry, wait, we know, how to, we know how to alias module methods, right? Class self, then alias, I'm just going to go with dp for this one, because this is going to be an example, I'm not actually going to modify the graphics, um, dp, and then update, because we're aliasing the update method, go update, and, and, yep, so that's def update, all that stuff, and now what we're going to do is I'm going to have p updated, oh, graphics, graphics, updated, alright, and then I'm going to go with dp, just to call the actual graphics out update. Yes, and now, there we go, graphics updated, and new game. So as you can see, every single frame, this method here is getting called. The only reason I'm showing this to you is because um, if you ever need something that needs to be updated all the time, feel free to use uh, the, graph the update method for graphics. For the time tracker specifically though, I'm not actually going to be using this. Instead, uh, I would use the scene, uh, scene base. All right, and that's another thing I should add to this: uh, scene class, scene class. I'm just gonna have that equal to nil. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing this is because what I want to do is I want to have it so that I can set up time trackers. That will keep time. Um, that will update themselves all the time, if they're allowed to. So what I mean by this is, when I have scene class here, if I have it equal to nil, that means it will always update no matter what scene I'm currently in. But if I have it set to an um, to a scene, well, that means that that means that if I'm not in that scene, I do not want this to be updated, right? Alright, so that's another thing, ATTR reader, and this one's going to be scene class, scene, scene type, scene type sounds better, alright, at scene type, is equal to scene class, okay, and so again, just explain that one more time, if I leave scene class as nil, I want to have it so this time tracker actually updates all the time. Okay? But if it's not equal to nil, then I want this time tracker to only update if I'm in this certain scene. Okay? So, uh, let's, let's do this. We don't need that. Alright, I want to have time tracker... What was I going? Oh yes, scene base. Scene base, and I want to do this. I want to get the update method for scene base. Alright, um, and just here. Gonna alias the update method. Yep. Alias the update method, and... Alias method, alias, alias method, and the method we aliasing is update. Okay, so alias dp3 score diamond core 
I did not do an underscore. Underscore diamond core, underscore scene, base, underscore update, underscore. Yeah. That. I, yep. Okay. Update. Again. Odds. Because we don't give a damn about what's being inputted into it. Odds. And now. Now what we're going to do is going to go to time tracker. So diamond core. In here. Diamond core. Time tracker. Dot. Get time tracker list. I want to see if that works. Just to be sure that works first. In case I get an error. Do I get an error? Yes. Get time tracker list. My bad. And if I get time tracker list for diamond core. Nah, well. Hmm. Get time tracker lists. Trying to decide what to do here. So it completely blew over my mind, and I entirely forgot about it, but you have to... In order to make it so you can access this uh, method here at any time, um, go self dot. Now, in here, uh, with my time tracker, I just go diamond core time tracker dot get time tracker list. See? By putting self in front of it, that means you can access it um, without the need to be an instance of it. Okay? Play. There we go. No errors. Alright. So, what we're going to do now is going to go, that's get time tracker list, and now def self dot update underscore time trackers. Alright. And here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna go at at time tracker list dot each. Uh, yeah, we'll do each. Each do, and this takes in. Um, this is the variable name, so this is just a tracker. Doesn't need to be anything else. Tracker, and first thing I'm gonna do is gonna go. Um, if tracker dot scene okay so if tracker dot scene or scene type here dot scene type um if scene if tracker dot scene type is equal to anything besides nil we need to check to see if uh we can still update it okay and to do that we just go end uh and there and then we'll go scene manager dot scene is um, and then we just get this okay and um, what they'll do is they'll tell the scene manager to check what type of scene it is and if it's um, you know able to work with this one okay uh, let's check scene type and that reminds me of another thing I have to do instead of just going current frame plus equals that uh, current frame equals that go current frame plus equals uh I fix that frame count minus sorry frame count minus current frame uh no I'll try and think of that um what I was doing there was um, if you're in another scene 
and then the then it's not updating the time tracker anymore, and then you come back from that scene into a valid scene, it'll then just go current frames equal to graphics at frame count. No matter what, you've already passed that, you know, second that that, you know, it's still being updated regardless, basically. So I've got to think of a way to make it so it only updates properly. All right. All right. Um. But yeah, how about you just go plus equals one? Done. All right. Scene manager. That scene is tracker. That scene type. Yep. So if scene manager. That scene is that. We'll then go uh, tracker. This one here. Dot update. Cool. And that has a scene type. Otherwise. Otherwise, update. Yeah. All right. So, what are we doing here so far? Update time trackers. Um. We are going through each time tracker in the list, and then saying, "All right. So, which one?" Um. Going for each time tracker in the list, and then we're going. Do you have a scene type? You know, if you're not nil, which you put here. If your scene type is not nil, then um, just update. Okay. So if your scene type is not nil, then are we able to update you? If we are, update. Otherwise, if you don't have a scene type, then just update. All right. All right. Another thing we have to do is ID attr reader. ID and this one's just gonna go here at ID and this is going to equal time tracker dot list dot size. Alright, the reason why we're doing that is because when we dispose of this Alright, so def dispose um that's going to Remove this, remove from the time tracker list. Alright, um, time tracker list dot reject. Alright, I want to show this one. So, that's reject in that ray. Here it is. Alright, passes elements to the block in order, to, in order and evaluates them, deleting all those for which the result is true. Okay, now what that means is basically when I go reject, I have to go with that the uh, squiggly bracket. The anything can be put here, any variable name. So I'm just gonna go with tracker, tracker, and right here I'm gonna go tracker. Um, dot id is equal equal to at id. Okay, so what we're doing now is whenever you dispose of a time tracker, you want to get rid of it in the list, but you don't. You're not always going to know where exactly in the list it is. So what you do is instead um, you go through each um, thing in the list, and then you go reject with a exclamation mark. And what that will do is it will go through each thing in the list and say, "Are you true?" If you are, then I'm going to remove you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically it's going to go through the entire list. It's going to find the time track with the same ID as this one, and then it's going to remove it from the list because it's not needed anymore because we're disposing it. Which means when we go through update next time, it won't be checking the one we just got rid of. Okay, alright, so that's dispose. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty much done. So now what we can do is we can go into uh I think in initialize. No. What we wanna do is we're gonna go into here, we're gonna create some guy. Yep, some guy. This actor thing. You, why not? 
and he's going to create me a new time tracker. So that's at tracker. I'm going to go with T for that. T tracker. In case there's another tracker inside game interpreter. T tracker equals diamond call time tracker dot new. Yep. Which will be updated every single frame because I have not passed anything into it. New and I want this to be five seconds long. Okay. So then I'm just gonna go with this guy. I'm gonna put him there, and then I'm gonna get another one, put him there, and he's gonna tell me if it's time up. Message box underscore P T trucker dot time up. Alright. So talk to the guy on the left first. It has started. Talk to this guy. False. False. Couple more seconds. False. Okay. Still false. Um, huh. did I do that wrong? Uh, I'm just trying to figure this one. So I'm just going to go Mr. Person let's go P here. Just to make sure it's actually all updating fine. Yeah. Ah, uh, you're not updating. That's the problem. And why are you not updating? Because, yeah, that'd be why. There we go. Now. One, two, three, up, oh, three seconds. Four, five. Nope. There we go. True. I just counted too quickly. Alright. And there we go. That's time tracker. So every time you need... So with this, from now on, every single time you need to create a new... Uh, create something to keep track of time, you just go diamond call time tracker dot new. Done. And then whenever you need to access it, just go get, get that. There. Done. Alright, so time tracker, what is next? Next is C menu quick option creation. Um, I think I... The rest of these ones should be pretty easy. Time tracker was really the only difficult one there, somewhat. Well, it's not really difficult, but it took a while. The rest of these ones should be pretty easy to do. So, maybe I can knock it out in less than an hour. Probably not, but I'm gonna try. Alright. So that's done. Next one is uh, scene. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put them up here from now on. All right. Just because it might fit in a bit better. Yeah. Alright, that, that should work fine. Copy this. Give me that. Down here is where we uh, change. Alright, that's new class. And not new class. This one is edited class. And this one's going to be scene menu. Mm, not really scene menu. What are we doing here? We are changing options to make it fit better. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, edited class is, and what are we doing this for? We are doing this for this. See menu quick option creation. There we go. All right, and 
then what we're going to do with this is I'm just going to copy uh, yeah you can copy that that has my window menu and where is my there's my scene menu I need scene menu and the other one itself, the command window wherever that was yeah that give me that alright so I don't need that, you can go away so this one's gonna have its own original commands don't worry alright and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have uh, stuff in here. I'm gonna go def get original commands dp3 actually dp3 yeah get original commands well instead of get just have a yeah we do get get alright and this one's gonna return nothing yes alright it might seem a bit far-fetched right now, don't worry. It will hopefully make sense in a second. Alright. Um, update. Yep. Get original commands. Right here, that's for adding original commands, and I just need to go dp3. diamond call and this one is for adding original commands yeah just, just keep it like that again this is palm time I've already done this up here somewhere hey there we go fancy stuff give me that alias listings yeah alright and this is an alias method alias method alright so now what we're going to do um, from here on is, first of all, call the original method to get uh, so that other people using this can add in their own options above mine. Then what we're going to do is going to go dp3 dot get original commands dot each. Oh, instead, um, what I'm going to do is want to go original commands. See so you to that. Commands. And then I'm going to go original commands dot each do command okay um command do and what it's going to do is going to return three things first one being actually it's going to return three things first one being the name of it so that's going to be command zero Sec uh, second one's going to be command one for if it's enabled or not. All right, and the second one, this one here, is going to be command zero. Dot two sim, you know, two symbol. Dot two sim. Okay, now that's done. Um, what next? That as the original commands, and then you need to um, add in a way for this method to be passed back. I need to have a little think on this, see how I'm going to do it, because I thought about it before, but then it, it slipped out of my mind over the past hour, so I'm going to have to try and remember it. Alright, so I had a little thought about it, and I realized what we can do. So we don't actually need this at all. I can get rid of that entirely. It's going to go set handler here. 
and that's going to be commands to sim here because again we get in this part here right and this one here is going to be the method and that is going to be command 2 okay command 2 alright so that sounds a little funky and weird don't worry here's what we're going to do um, when when you go into this method here what um that's a new method actually new method and I also realize I haven't done this yet yeah alright um what's gonna happen is in here with this return first thing you're gonna do is gonna have your um text name so just imagine that's a name for one of the options so option option and then the second um, command is going to be if it's enabled or not which would be true it's enabled and then the third one's going to be the method itself the one th the thing that's going to run when this option is selected so that's when you create a new method and then go blah 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 so <clears throat> what you should be doing is aliasing the get original commands and then returning this original one plus others okay so here's what we're going to do we're going to make a few new methods actually so I'm going to copy this this uh, thing here I'm going to put it down here we don't need scene tile anymore go away and so now we're just going to alias it twice we're going to alias it twice okay so that's deep 3 get original commands we're going to alias that so the fact that I'm not actually going to alias this for real, I'm just going to have crappy names, so PK, okay, and yeah, I'm going to have PK there, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have return, um, I'm going to have return here, I'm going to have, the first one is going to be the name of it, so I'm just going to have battle2, uh, battle 2 and then well, second one second one was enabled so that's true otherwise if I didn't want it to be true I can have game underscore switches game underscore switches uh, 10 and then the, le the last one is going to be the method itself so that's I have to make a new method now def uh, battle 2 command Yep. And what I'm gonna do when I play this method, I'm just gonna go BGM dot new battle to hundred one hundred dot play and then scene manager dot go to scene map. Yeah. Alright. So now just here in here, just go method and done. So from now on this uh, new original command will be added thanks to this and it will go down to here when I select it. Alright so let's try this a second time. So I'm just gonna do, I'm just doing music for this one but in actual versions of this I'd be using scene and the reason why we use scene manager.go to is because that way it just goes to the map rather than calls the map because you only want to call a scene if you can go if you want to go back to the menu after that if you return the scene okay that's why you use go to for scene map okay so the first one's game to just end and this one's just going to be true because it's going to be enabled this one's going to be uh... field three field three yeah and this is just field three command field, field three command Field three, and if I did all that right, that means hang on, something I forgot first. First of all, PK. No, no, that's PJ now. That's return PJ plus that. Yeah. So that way, you're returning all the commands. Yes. Now. Ah, oh, nil, no class. Why was that? Oh, oh, damn. 
Okay. And the symbol. Okay. Um, give me a sec. All right. So I found the problem. Um, basically, the uh, command is the uh, command window itself it has not been initialized until after the main command list is done. So in order to um, be able to set handlers, we have to uh, use the activate method. Okay. So back to where we were, which is here. I'm gonna go def activate. Now I'm gonna alias that too. So activate alias db3 underscore diamond core um yeah, let's go activate underscore axxz so I can alright Alright, so now whenever it, whenever it activates, first of all I just call the original method so it does actually activate, and then I set the handlers. Okay, set the handlers. Now let's go original command each, do, each do, and just set the handler. Because activate is called after add original commands is called, so that's fine. Call original command. Yep. Alias method. Activate. Not activate. Got silly. Okay. And now, if I did everything right, it should work. Oh, damn it. For false, false class. Hang on a moment here. Um. False, false class? Hang on. I don't really understand. Um. Hmm. So from what I can see, it's screwed up because we're actually accessing a singular array rather than a 2D array. Alright, and I think the workaround for that would be to be using uh, a hash. Hash array. Alright. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to actually make comments here. So that way, in the future, whenever I have to use this again, I know what I have to do. Alright, and this one's going to be comment hash is equal to that. Um, they go to yep. First one is name, uh, label, label enabled, true. And then method. Method of ref. Sequel to method. Yeah, all right. Then just return hash plus alias. Yeah, all right, that makes sense to me. So in here in original commands, uh, original commands with each underscore key do command. All right, and set handler. The first one's going to be original commands uh, key key. And then, uh, right here, key, and then label. 
label, and then the one after that is original command key. And then method ref. Method, let's go with ref. Cool. Same for here. This one's label. Label. Command to sim. Uh, saying that's label. I'm just going to go enabled here. Enabled. Give me that. Okay, and now I gotta copy this. Alright, so your label is battle two. Battle two, you're enabled, no problem. And your method name is this. So return hash plus alias. Alias. I don't know if you can plus a hash. I think you can though. I'm just going to assume you can. Feel three. Field 3, you're enabled, and field 3 command. Return hash plus pj. Should have done that here too. Okay. Work now. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Forgot. Completely, completely slipped past my mind. Commas. Commas everywhere. Alright. Come on. I didn't think you could plus a hash. However, can you append one? Kind of have money though. Oh well, damn it. Then I guess. Um. Two hash there. It's fine. I guess the next best thing to do would be to actually modify it. Okay, so instead what we're going to do is, let's label here. So thing, first thing we're going to do is going to get pk, pk. It's going to go with hash is equal to pk, because why the hell not? Now hash, I realize this is getting convoluted. equal to yeah that should work Field three, field three. That was PJ. PJ. Return hash. Okay. So now, instead of just being label, you're now just key. Label. Nope. Just key. Okay. 
Now you should work. Damn it, man. Just command. Oh, right. I should have called you key. You too. Key. No, that's key. What am I doing? Key. Key on its own. Okay. Come on. Far out, man. Key do. Key. Key to sim. Hmm. And the problem right there would be the fact that this is each instead of each key. Let's go. There we go. Run it. Three. There we go. Now we have a simple access uh, way of adding new commands. So if I want to add any more commands, I just simply get this right here, copy this, put it down here, alias it, give it a unique name, I'm not going to because I'm too lazy for that, hash is equal to PA, you know, getting this, the original method, I should have said that before, original Null method. Um, then define your new command here. So this one's going. Uh, we'll just call this one battle one. Battle one enabled. Um, only enable if game underscore switches ten is on. We'll do eight. I like eight. And uh, that's battle one. Right here, change this one to battle one. The command to battle one. Okay. Play. Should be grayed out. Yep. Can't access it. Yep, I can access the other two at least. Cool. Command. Turn on the switch eight. And. Hang on. Oh, right. Because I did not change the actual music. One. Right. My bad. <clears throat> Game. I forgot entirely. There we go. So now we have a quick and easy way of adding in new commands to the uh, adding in new original commands. All right. So we can mark that one off. Go back. Go back. All right, now get event first comment. That's easy, very easy. All right, we've already done this with first comment here. All we have to do is basically copy it into the core. Core here. So I don't need these anymore. These are just examples. That part is done. All right, and this is going to be part of the diamond core thing. So diamond core. Need that module. Module. Diamond core. And just a method. So def self dot get first comment. Get first event comment. Hmm. Better yet, I'll do module 
in here, module event, event, and now def self dot get first first event comment end 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 okay and what we're gonna do now is gonna go game underscore map to get the first comment so um that takes the event ID event ID alright so now we go with game underscore map game underscore map dot events event ID event ID okay and this one is going to be we're going to call it make it equal to event event is equal to that and then um, if event dot list zero so if not event um, sorry if event dot list okay so if um, the event has anything in its page at all because there is an issue where if there's nothing in their page the list is equal to null okay so if event list is not nil and event list uh, zero dot code is equal equal to 108 then return the code return first comment return uh, event dot list zero dot parameters zero end otherwise return that nothing alright cool that part's done now we can do the exact same thing for get all comments so I'm gonna copy my labels now just so I know what I'm doing module down core get event comments that's actually a new module new module events game events Yeah, do game events. Game events. All right. That was a new method. New method. New method. Get first event comment. That's entirely inaccurate. Get event first comments. What it should be. Alright, that's the uh, first comment done. So now we get all comments. Alright, so get events. All comments. Def self dot get underscore event underscore all comments. Event ID. Okay, start off again the same way. Alright, and now what we just do, um, check this again, if event list, if event list, otherwise return nothing, yeah, we want to return an array of comments, okay, now, we want to go event.list, Event dot list. Um, dot each do and this is command. Command. And what we do now we just go if command dot code is equal equal to one oh eight then uh get the uh, parameter which I should have put here um, comments is equal to that 
return comments. Yeah. Alright. If command code is equal to 108, then comments dot push and this one is just going to be command dot uh, parameters zero. Okay. So, that should be all we need. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go diamond core. First of all, I'm going to make the make one of these guys again. And it's going to have comments side here. So comment, go on, you know, gibberish. Yep, that would be the first comment. Second, uh, her next thing would be, you know, text, which is not a comment, so I won't receive it for that. Uh, so I should probably make this actually equal something. This is a comment, is a comment. This is a second comment. Yep. Then I do battle processing. Against the slime and I can escape. And then third comment. This is the third comment. We have a big capital O, but whatever. Okay, and now I'll make a second one right here. And in a script call, diamond call. Next one was game events, and then dot. I don't quite recall what the first one was. The first one was uh, get event first comment event ID. All right, so this event ID here, this is event ID 11. So I want that. Get first comment, just put it down here, dot, get first comment, uh, 11, and message box underscore p. Do the same again, just after it. So I was going to first print out first comment, then second, so first comment yeah that's fine second comment um, all comments capital O again silly alright and that's get all comments here Okay, and if that was all done correctly... First comment. This is a comment. All comments. This is a comment, this is a second comment, this is the third comment. Cool. So we got all the comments from this event right here. And if I talk to her now... Gibberish. Data processor. So as you can see when I was talking to this one here, I got the first comment, then I got all the comments, and none of the none of this array here includes the battle or the message box. Okay? And there we go. So that is that done. It's only two hundred lines and as you can see we got I got into quite a bit of a predicament in a lot of this, because this is stuff I haven't actually done before. Some of this is anyway. These are just stuff I had ideas in my head and went, hey, it would be great if I tried this. And eventually it worked, but until it did, it was kind of, eh. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's that part done. The uh, CSV file reader is not that difficult to do, but I am running out of time, so I kind of need to wrap this up now. Here is this part done. I will post this up. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna post this up so you uh, can go through the code yourself. But Diamond Core is mine. That is my name for it. You do not touch. Diamond Core is B now. Okay. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So we have two new classes. 
plus some helper helper stuff to do. So we can actually create our own original commands on the fly now, and it's much easy. Very easy. Just go hash is equal to. I should do this probably. Hash is equal to alias, alias, then go hash label is equal to that, and then I just go return hash. Yeah. Cool. So now I know what I'm doing. Excellent. Anyway, that is that. And really, until next time, stay safe.